the property law and practice. Introduction to the module. This module will teach you about the basics of property law and practice surrounding real property along with the types of property rights and the land law principles rights and interests. You will also learn about the difference between registered and unregistered land. Topics covered in this module are What is the property law and practice? Types of property rights Land law principles rights and interests Legal estates, legal interests, and equitable interests Formalities for the land Protecting third-party interests Easements to use the land Covenants Trusts of lands Co-ownership Mortgages Adverse possession Difference between registered and unregistered land what is property law and practice? Property law and practice is the changing of contracts when real property is bought and sold. It is often referred to as the umbrella term conveyancing. Property lawyers' work not only covers residential properties, but can also commercial properties, anything from a small shop to a multifunctional block of offices. Their work also covers the land transfer and leasing of real property to others. Practice for a property lawyer can be fairly complex with them having to organise many different aspects of the property transfer. Many real property transfers have rights and restrictions that have to be coordinated to ensure a smooth sale. Property lawyers face another issue around the amount of money they have to deal with. They must communicate with both sides of the transfer deal to ensure the money is in place, but covered by a mortgage or savings. Types of property rights Property rights refer to the legal control and ownership over a particular piece of property. There are different types of rights that a property may have. These include No property, some property has no right to be owned by any person, but everyone can access it, such as TV signals, downloadable materials, natural resources and free printed newspapers, Communal property joint ownership of property, such as a joint car that more than one person has allowed access to. State property also known as public property is property that is available to everyone but is controlled by the community or government, such as a national park or community gardens. Private property is legally owned by a person or people that are on the deeds. No one has access to this property without the consent of the legal owner. Legal estates, legal interests, and equitable interests. Legal estates. Currently, there are only two forms of legal estate, which has been the case since 1925. Leasehold, this is sometimes known as term of years absolute and refers to temporary ownership of land, given in agreement by the real landowner. Freehold, this is sometimes called fee simple absolute in possession, and means that the land is owned outright with responsibility for upkeep and maintenance. Legal interests The legal interests in a property are as follows. The rights, easement, that a landowner has to obtain a rental fee from property on their estate. The charge a landowner can make from entering into a legal mortgage that is centred on their estate. Equitable interests. All other interests and fees that are not mentioned above are included in equitable interests, as mentioned in the Law of Property Act, LPA, 1925. Formalities for the land. The contract for the sale of a property and the interest in land must comply with the Law of Property Act 1989. It requires a written contract to be drawn up with relevant agreed parts that both parties sign. All parties do not need to sign all parts of the contract 
just the relevant parts. Standard formal contracts consist of two identical parts which are signed by both parties to incorporate the circumstances of the transaction. Some situations do not require a contract by law. Exemptions include the following. A property which is being sold with a lease of fewer than three years. A property or interests which are sold by auction. Deeds. Deeds are a formality that happens when transferring property or interest in land to another person. Apart from in the instance where a contract is not needed, deeds are an enforceable document that includes key information about the transfer. Protecting third-party interests Proprietors of properties have the right to change any disposition that is legal in the general law. It is therefore important to impose notices and restrictions to ensure protection for third-party interests in the land. To protect third-party interests in the land, they need to make sure the land registry registers them. Entry onto the register ensures that the interests are bind when they fall into the following categories. Notices. A notice is an entry made about a burden of interests on a property which affects the property or a charge. Restrictions. A restriction is put on the register that prevents or regulates changes and removals being made. Easements to use the land. Easements are legal rights for one owned land to have access or the right to another land in the following ways. The right of way to cross someone else's land to access your own. The right of light, the right to shine light across another person's land. The three main types of easement that may be granted are as follows. Express grant, where land is transferred to someone and they need the right to gain access to the road through someone else's land. Implied grant, where land may be granted an easement before the full transfer has taken place and prior to an express grant being implemented. Prescription, where a user can prove sustained and continuous use of access to the land, believed to be a right of way. Covenants. Convents are rules that are set out in the deeds and are signed for in agreement before completion of the transfer. Some of the convents can be positive and some negative. The burden of the land is the person the covenant was given to, but it cannot be enforceable to the direct successor in the title unless one of the following occurs. It touches and concerns the burdened land. It was entered into benefiting the burdened land. The original parties intended it to be with the burdened land and not personal. The covenants burden all successors of the land. People who are no longer in possession of the land can still be sued and have enforceable action taken against them if they breach a covenant whilst in ownership of the land. Trusts of lands. Trusts of lands are governed by Trusts of Land and Appointment of Trustees Act 1996 and may be put in place to support the death of a family member. There can be up to four trustees. The trustees have the same legal rights as the original owner of the land, but may need to get beneficiary signatures to carry out some actions. Trustees often transfer the property for a sum of money, as set out in the trust deeds. Often the trustees form a three-way party, with the trustee in the middle, and then the following people. Beneficiary Anyone who gains the benefit of the transfer that the trustee has the power of. Settler or grantor. The person that grants the trust to the trustee. Trusts are also carried out when more than one person holds interests in a property or land. They both hold equal powers, but will need the permission of the other joint owner. Co-ownership. Co-ownership occurs when more than one person has the same interest in buying land or property. This is usually a couple buying a house together. Legally a trust of lands occurs in this instance and the couple can buy the property with a joint tenancy or a tenancy in common.
a joint tenancy. Both parties equally share the property. On the death of one party, the existing party owns the rest of the property. A tenancy in common. A share of the property is equaled out in chosen varying parts to all the tenants. The participants can choose a third party to receive their share, or they can sell their share to another person. Mortgages Mortgages are amounts of money lent to a borrower, mortgagee, by a lender, mortgager, to enable the purchase of interests of a property or land. There can be more than one mortgage in succession for the same property. Mortgages are legally binding and must be included in the deeds for the property. If the land is registered, then the mortgage must be registered as a charge for the land. Lenders can sue or claim for unpaid debt by the power of sale if one of the following is not met. The borrower has not paid any capital for three months. LPA 1925 the borrower has not paid any interest charges for two months. LPA 1925. The borrower has broken some provision in the mortgage. LPA 1925. The property will be sold, and any money will be used to pay off the mortgages. If there is not enough money from the sale to pay off all the lenders, the lenders will then sue the borrower. Adverse possession. Adverse possession means the limitation of actions, it is commonly used as a term for squatters' rights. This is where a claimant may lose the power to sue a trespasser if they have been an occupant in a property for several years, usually 12 years for unregistered land and 10 for registered land. For the trespasser to claim the title by adverse possession, they need to show their intention as the following. That they had possession of the land that they have intentions to have the land for the same period. The applicant can be registered as the proprietor after this time, if it is thought to be beneficial to the applicant. Difference between registered and unregistered land. Following this examination of land registration systems, we'll take a final look at the differences between registered and unregistered land. Unregistered land. If property or title deeds are destroyed accidentally and the land isn't registered, it can be challenging to prove ownership. The ownership of a plot of land will remain unknown until it is registered. A review of title deeds and interest can take much longer if the land is currently unregistered. If a loved one dies, interest in the land cannot be easily proven if it is unregistered. Fraudsters and conmen target unregistered land as it is easier to fake documentation for it. Registered land. Full information about the title and land can be downloaded from the land registry website in seconds. Full property details and rights can be obtained from the land registry records. If a title is registered and the owner is the subject of an elaborate fraud, they can claim indemnity from the land registry. Deeds and documentation are not required once a title is stored on the register. Summary In this module, you have learned Property lawyers' work covers residential properties and commercial properties. No property, communal property. State property and private property are different types of property rights. There are two types of legal estate leasehold and freehold. Standard formal contracts consist of two identical parts which are signed by both parties to incorporate the circumstances of the transaction. Deeds are a formality that happens when transferring property or interest in land to another person. Easements are legal rights for one owned land to have access, or the right to another land in the following ways. The right of way. The right of light. Convents are rules that are set out in the deeds and are signed in agreement for before completion of the transfer. Mortgages are amounts of money lent to a borrower, mortgagee, by a lender, mortgager to enable the purchase of interests of a property or land. 
Adverse possession means the limitation of actions, it is commonly used as a term for squatters' rights. Victims of land fraud can recover expenses as long as they registered with the land registry.